Hey, it's Harker from Play. Today I'll show you how to create a messaging prototype. If you want to follow along, you can go to our messaging prototype project in our learn section. For this video, I've actually removed everything from the page and we're going to start by building the design together. Then we'll move on into interaction mode, add those interactions, and in the end, you're going to have a functioning messaging prototype. So let's get started. As I said, the page is empty. The first thing we want to do is add this messenger to the bottom. Inside this messenger, which is just a horizontal stack, we have a native text field, and then we also have a send button. I'm actually going to increase the opacity to 100%. Let's take this messenger and we're just gonna drag it onto our page. Now we want to be at the bottom, so I'm going to pin it to the bottom and add a little bit of negative offset so it's not quite touching the bottom there. Great. Next, we need to add our message into the page. We're gonna do this into another stack that we're gonna call messaging. So I'm gonna open the quick add menu. I've already searched for stack, great. And we're gonna add this V stack. In the layers panel, I'm just gonna rename this messages. Now inside this messages stack, this is where each of the message components are gonna show up. We have that here. So I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna drag it into this stack. Now two weird things happened there. First, the component that we just dragged in now appears in two places. That's because we tried to drag the, the main component into the page or onto the prototype. And main components cannot be used in, in, in the UI. It needs to be instance of that component. So the main component will stay on the canvas and this instance, which you can tell because it's a hollow cube here, that's what's gonna be inside our prototype. Next, you can see that it's aligned to the right, even though the stack has left alignment, which you can see right here. That's because you can actually override individual objects alignment. So in my main component here, in this like context bar position panel, you can see we have aligned this to the right side. If that was turned off, you would see it would follow its parents alignment, but we want it to be aligned to the right there. Last thing we're gonna do is just customize this messages stack. So I'm gonna add a little bit of gap in here. Let's add a little bit of padding. And we're also gonna set the height to be auto so it'll grow based on how many messages are inside there. So I'm just gonna double click and now it's set to auto. Now we have everything set up, let's move into interaction mode. So we're gonna create multiple interactions here. One interaction is going to be on this send button and that's gonna trigger the whole send message. Then we're gonna have another interaction on the full page. And then we're gonna have a third interaction on this main component here. Let's start off at first with this send button. On this, we're gonna add a tap trigger. And on the tap trigger, we are going to set an event. So we're gonna use a set event action. Now, when we click on the drop down, you can choose any event. We don't have any, so we can either create a new event here or go over to our events panel and create one here. So let's just do send message. That's all you have to do. Now, just select it from in here. So this is the first part of a custom event interaction. We're going to trigger it by tapping on this object or doing whatever you'd like. And if you're using this in another context, that is going to fire the event. And then we're gonna have an event trigger that's gonna listen for this to be fired. So we're gonna place that on the full page. Let's look for event, custom event. And now we're gonna select that same event that we just created, send message. Now, just to complete the circle here, basically this means that when someone taps on this button here, it is going to fire any actions we put on this event trigger. The reason we do it this way is because you might want to fire this event in several places. So putting it on the page and then you can call it with any set event action. So now the first thing we want to do is we want to set a variable to save whatever the user types in here. So we're going to do a set variable action. On the left, we're gonna select that variable. Just like events, we don't have a variable created yet. So let's go over to the variables panel and I'm just gonna do a global variable here. It's gonna be a string because it's a message that someone's typing and we can just title it new message. Now, if you're unfamiliar with using variables, this is typically the syntax we use. Start with a lowercase and then if you have any additional words inside the variable, you can uppercase those. You don't have to have an initial value. I, in this case, I'm just gonna add hello and I'll show you why later on. So now we can go back to our set variable action. We'll select that new message. And now we want to save the value of this text field. So we're gonna target that text field. Let's just type in text field. And you can see it's called input message. That's the object. Now we do a period. And now we have a list of all the objects properties. The one we want here is the value of that text field. So current value of text field. 
and then just press return. And now that's gonna save. Every time we tap that button, this event fires. Now, the other thing we wanna do when we tap that button is duplicate this message. So we're gonna do that with a duplicate action. We're gonna target the object that we wanna duplicate. So that's gonna be this sent message. We can choose where we wanna duplicate this to. We're gonna do same parent in this case, because, and that's that messages stack we created. That's what we're gonna do. And then you can choose if you want it to be in the last position or first position. We're gonna do last because any subsequent messages will go one after the other. Then you can also choose animation settings. Let's do scale and fade, but you can always change this later along with all of the easing curves, delay duration, all of that stuff. Now, the last thing we wanna do is reset the value of this text field after we've created the new message. So I'm gonna do another set variable action. I'm actually going to just do command D to duplicate this. Now we are going to use actually the right side here as the left side, because with the with set variables, you can actually use an expression on the left side to not set a variables value, but to set some object properties value. So I'm going to right click here, copy this value, right click on the left side, paste this value. And now we're just setting the input message text fields value. We want it to be empty. So I'm gonna click on this and I'm just gonna do quotation marks with nothing inside. That's just resetting it to empty. Now, before we try this out, I wanna do one more thing. You can see when I enter my text field, it's now totally hidden by the keyboard. So we wanna move it above the keyboard. So we're gonna add another event on the page. This one is going to be a device event. We're gonna choose on keyboard show here. And so when the keyboard shows, we wanna change the offset of this text field. So I am going to do a set property action here. On here, we're going to target this messenger. And then we're going to do property translate y and then we are going to change this value to some number. Now, in this case, I actually wanna calculate that keyboard height and you can do that with play a device property. So let's click on the left side of this value, use an expression here, and now we're gonna type in device because we're using a device property. And again, following that same structure, device dot, and now we can see all of these uh, properties here. We're gonna do keyboard height here. And then I'm actually gonna multiply this times negative one because we want it to go up rather than down. So now you can see, and we'll turn on animate too. Now, when I tap that, it's gonna move above the text or above the keyboard. But if I get rid of it, it stays up there. So we need to add another keyboard event. So I'm gonna take this event, do command D to duplicate it. On the second event, we're gonna change it to on keyboard hide. This time, we're just gonna reset this value back to zero. So now I open it, pops up, close it, goes away. I'm gonna select all of these and press return to hide them so they're not in our way right now while we finish this interaction. Okay, so now that we've got all of that, let's try this out. On my phone, I'm gonna type in hello and press send. You can see that a new text bubble appeared but it didn't put in what we typed in. That's because we have not set that at the component level. So we're gonna go onto our main component here and when this appears, we wanna set this text value to whatever that variable value is. And because that variable value is going to change, having it on the main component is going to change it every time it appears. So we're gonna add an event trigger on here. It's also gonna be a view event. This time it's gonna be on appear. And when this appears, we wanna set that text. So we're going to target this message body that's the text inside there. And we are going to, instead of typing something in here, we are going to set this to be the value of the new message variable. So you can see when I did that on my phone, this is automatically updated to be hello because this text bubble appeared, this component appeared, and it set the message body to be that new message, which again, we set that value to be hello, but we're going to update that. So now when I type something in, let's do what's up. And now I press send. You can see now that value is going to be saved and the message bubble is going to be duplicated. And then we can press return to close that. And that's how you'll create a messaging prototype in play. There's so much more you can do with this to customize it further. And we'll actually be creating a video soon on how you can create a back and forth AI chatbot using OpenAI. So look out for that video coming soon. Thanks so much for watching this video.